The Southern Lakes area has been sculpted over time by colossal glaciers to form some of the most remarkable terrain in Aotearoa. The remaining landscape holds some of the most beautiful and challenging tramping routes in New Zealand. One track in particular is often regarded as the ultimate alpine adventure. The Rootburn Track. The Rootburn Track is a 33 km tramp over the main divide, which takes approximately three days to complete. The alpine section of the track will take the entirety of your second day and runs for approximately 10 km. In this video, we will look at the track as if we were starting from the Glenorchy site, but the tramp can be attempted in any direction. The great walk season is the best time of year to attempt this tramp, as all facilities are actively managed. It isn't recommended to attempt the route burn outside of this period, as facilities are greatly reduced, and snow covers the track, making tramping nearly impossible. The average daily summer temperature sits around 5 to 10 degrees, and you can expect approximately 200 days of rain per year. It's important to remember that you will be in an alpine environment, which means there is a good chance you will experience heavy rain, strong winds, snow, and freezing temperatures, even during the great walk season. So, warm and waterproof clothing will be essential, as well as a good pair of tramping boots. Make sure you carry enough water for the whole day, as places to fill up are limited. As with all walks and tramps in New Zealand, make sure you leave your intentions with a trusted contact and inform them when you've finished your tramp. You can find out more about leaving your intentions at the Mountain Safety Council website. The track starts off relatively easy from the Rootburn Shelter. From here you will gently tramp 7.5 kilometres up the Rootburn River through Beach Forest to Rootburn Flats Hut. You can either stop here for the night or continue on another 1.5 hours up to the Rootburn Falls Hut and spend your first night there. It's a decent climb up to the Rootburn Falls Hut, so take your time, look around and enjoy the views down the Rootburn Valley as you ascend higher up the mountain. The following morning as you leave Rootburn Falls Hut, you will need to travel over approximately 500 metres of rock slabs. These slabs are just to the left of the Rootburn Falls and are often wet, so take care when climbing this section as it may be slippery. Just follow the orange markers to stay on track and be sure-footed as it's common to sprain or twist your ankles on this loose slippery rock. The track will then take you up into the open basin as you make your way toward Lake Harris. From here, the track weaves above the lake and it can get quite narrow in some places. This leaves you exposed as you have a cliff on one side and a steep drop off on the other. This usually isn't too much of an issue, just be careful as a slip could have very severe consequences. During winter, this section of the track can be buried in snow, making it very dangerous to attempt. Several avalanche paths also cross through this section, so don't go any further without the correct skills and equipment to continue safely. However, during the great walk season, DOC will actively monitor and manage the avalanche conditions and will help you get across this section if snow is present. As you move past Lake Harris, you'll reach the highest point of the route burn, Harris Saddle. The saddle is where you will feel the first full exposure of any westerly weather. This means that winds may be strong and temperatures will be much colder. Head into Harris Shelter on bad weather days and take a break. This is a basic shelter with a toilet, but it should not be used for sleeping in, unless it's an emergency. This is the only shelter available on the track until Mackenzie Hut. A popular side trip is to head up Conical Hill. This detour is signposted from the shelter, so follow the signs and stay on track at all times. This is a two hour side trip, so if you attempt Conical Hill, make sure you leave yourself plenty of time by departing Rootburn Falls Hut early and take on extra food for energy to ensure you'll be able to carry on to Mackenzie Hut afterwards. There is no need to attempt the Conical Hill detour if conditions are cloudy or foggy as there will be no view to see and it's a lot of extra time and energy to waste. From here you will begin to cross the Hollyford face. Watch for weather coming from the west as you'll be most exposed along this section. The track is marked but in bad weather or snow it can be easy to accidentally lose this and descend too low. So be sure to identify the track markers or poles and don't be tempted to head down the side of the hill. The track is narrow in some sections so take your time and watch your footing. After three and a half kilometres the track takes a sharp turn around the final ridge. It's essential that you follow the track markers as there is no alternative ways down to Lake Mackenzie from here. Another one hour of tramping down the hill will bring you to the final destination for the day, 
Lake Mackenzie Hut. Your last day will be spent tramping out to the Divide Shelter through dense beech trees. Take care, as the weather can still change fast. You'll just be a little more sheltered for the rest of the tramp. Pay special attention when crossing Erland Falls during periods of heavy rain, as this can be prone to flooding. The Rootburn Track is undeniably one of the best tramps New Zealand has to offer, but it can be hazardous, so aim to tramp it during the great walk season to minimise any risk. Talk to dock staff at the Fiordland National Park or Queenstown Visitor Centres to stay up to date on the latest track conditions. Make sure you check out the official Fiordland National Park and Mount Aspiring National Park weather forecasts at metservice.com before you go. Finally, remember to leave your intentions with a trusted contact before you start your tramp. Most importantly, don't forget to enjoy New Zealand's ultimate alpine adventure.